Welcome to another weekly stock market update. Today is January 12, 2020. Today we're going to take a look at the S&P 500 cash index and the e-mini future for the S&P 500, the Nasdaq 100, and also the Russell 2000. Then we're going to take a look at the gold and the crude oil market along with the uh, U.S. dollar. Before we proceed, just want to remind you to click on that subscribe button and also the notification icon so you won't miss any future video from me. And also in the uh, next couple of days or so, I'll be uh, posting a video on three stocks that I'm watching right now that went parabolic. And also they are scheduled to report earning within three weeks. So, um, you know, I'm going to put in uh, some uh, ideas on uh, how I'm going to trade that up to earning not into earning or through earning because these trades, I will uh, close them out before the earnings uh, come out. So uh, stay tuned for that video and I probably will post that uh, in the early part of next week. So click on the subscribe and notification icon. And now let's take a look at the S&P 500 cash index. As you can see on this weekly chart here, it is still confined in this megaphone channel that started back uh, you know, from uh, March low 2009 as you can see here it is getting very close to that upper boundary here last week and for all intent and purpose that this pretty much came uh, you know came up to this uh, upper uh, megaphone channel it's all depends how accurate i draw the line right so uh, but the uh, s p 500 did close with another uh, positive week very strong week even on the verge of the uh, you know potential world war three you know back in uh, you know last week on wednesday you know when iran bombed the uh, u.s bases uh, you know, in Iraq. So uh, the market recovered uh, nicely and it closed out the week with another uh, all-time closing high, you know, uh, before it closed on the week with a little bit of a pullback on Friday. But you can see that it is getting a little bit uh, parabolic here. And if we go back and take a look at this area here, you see how, you know, how uh, parabolic is just kind of goes straight up here pretty much, right? It just... Uh, you know, so, uh, and they come up to this uh, upper trend line, then we got a little bit of a pullback or correction here. So, uh, who knows? Maybe uh, it will happen again at, uh, you know, this recent run up, right? You know, so, you know, kind of came up uh, a little bit of uh, parabolic and uh, straight up and getting close to this uh, upper trend line. And maybe we see a pullback back to uh, somewhere around this uh, 3,027 area, right, from this uh, previous uh, pivot high. Uh, breakout level. So, uh, and uh, let's go and take a look at the uh, the market indicators to see where we are. First, uh, let's go and take a look at the put call ratio. And you can see the uh, put call ratio came up a little bit and sitting at 0.75. It was down here at 0.55 area earlier in the week. But it is coming up. Still, there's nothing, you know, saying that the that the market is getting very really fearful. So, uh, but it is uh, coming up a little bit, uh, not as bullish as uh, earlier. And the fix is still down here at this, uh, you know, 12 wish uh, level here. Although it did went up uh, when the bombing occurred uh, on Wednesday night or uh, early Thursday morning on the East Coast time. So, um, so but right now it's still pretty much at the uh, uh, fairly low level and until this start coming up and also the uh, put call ratio start getting up to this, you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 area, then I think the market will start, uh, you know, building in some fear and that's when we might see a little bit of a pullback uh, that could occur. But in the meantime, we're just keeping an eye on it right now because the uh, uh, market is telling, telling us that uh, it, uh, the market is still pretty uh, uh, bullish. But uh, anything could happen, right? You know, just like on Wednesday night, early uh, Thursday morning. You know, so, uh, so we just have to be uh, prepared for the uh, unexpected. And also the other things that we want to look at is the uh, new high, new low here. Uh, as the uh, S&P 500 is making a new all-time high, closing high, the new high, new low did not come up and take out this peak here. So, so that's a little bit uh, uh, thing that kind of raised a flag for us to be uh, uh, on a little bit of a cautious uh, side. Okay, looking at the 
advanced decline, you could see that the advanced decline also made a new high in conjunction with the uh, S&P 500. So that is not telling us uh, that the market is uh, getting weaker. So everything is pretty much in sync in terms of the uh, advanced decline, the cumulative advanced decline in the S&P 500. Although there is uh, slightly less uh, new new high over new low, uh, you know, the net new high on this recent uh, new uh, uh, closing high on the S&P 500, but it's nothing to be alarmed about yet. And also the uh, uh, put call ratio, although it's, it is coming up a little bit to 0.75, but it is not to a point that the market is uh, feeling uh, fearful. Okay, so uh, so... So again, it is something to be cautious, uh, you know, with the parabolic run recently, we need to uh, sort of be prepared for some uh, potential pullback. I'm going to take a look at the, uh, the daily uh, uh, S&P 500, and we'll take a look at that to uh, a little bit closer to see what we mean by, uh, you know, I think the market has still got a little bit more upside to go before we... Uh, see any substantial uh, pullback when i say substantial is like maybe three or five percent i mean i mean nowadays right when we see three percent we say oh my god you know there's going to be a market crash right because uh, people have not been used to seeing much of a pullback right you know it just you know, the market has been buying the dip so anyway uh taking a look at the s p 500 cash index here there's a couple of things i just want to follow up remember that the uh, balance area that we're looking at and we essentially got this uh, you know, projection up here and it, it uh, has already exceeded that 100% major move and right now it seems to be uh, coming up to this uh, 141 extension which is about 3300 and that's a nice round number for the market to uh, tag. Then the other thing is we also got confluence up here on this 78.6 and that is based on this symmetry move that I have uh, projected out. So this symmetry move is basically projecting this particular swing, you know, the magnitude of this swing from this pivot low here, right? From this pivot low up, and essentially on a 100% major move, we would get 33.68. And at a 78.6 uh, or close to 80% of the move, we essentially get a little bit above that 3,300. So, you know, the market liked the uh, round numbers. So we'll keep an eye on this uh, 3,300 for uh, the near future because uh, right now on uh, last Friday, we did get a engulfing outside day bearish candle. So we might get a little pullback, you know, minor pullback. I'd be surprised if we see it come down to this uh, uh, trend line here on this channel. But anything is possible. If it come down, you know, we're still probably looking for a little bit of a bounce by the dip and come back and test this uh, 3300 area. You know, so uh, so that would be uh, uh, a scenario that I would uh, keep an eye on. Or the other thing is, who knows, right? It's just, it's just maybe we'll just uh, come up to this uh, 3300, take out this 3300 before we uh, do a little bit of a pullback, right? Now, just because we have this symmetry move, this 100%, doesn't mean that it's going to go all the way up and uh, tag that 100% extension, okay, to that uh, 3368. It could uh, go to 80%, uh, although it has exceeded that 61.8. So, okay, so let's go and take a look at the uh, E-mini S&P 500 future, the ES. So again, you know, essentially looking at this balance area, we have that projection up here at that 100% is 32.48.75, and that has been taken out. So right now, it seems to be uh, proceeding up to this uh, 3207 on this, again, you know, this uh, symmetry move here. The 100% projection will be somewhere around 3370 area, right? And uh, so we'll kind of keep an eye on this uh, 3207, 3300 area, same thing like the S&P 500 cash index. I uh, see would that be uh, taken out before it uh, get a little bit of a pullback and come back into this uh, 3250 area. And for the NQ, the E-mini uh, NASDAQ 100, again, I also have a uh, projected uh, symmetry move here to the 100% will basically take this thing up to uh, 9152. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. It did uh, break through this channel. So we might see a pullback, 
you know, come back down to this uh, lower boundary of this channel before we make another push. So that's another possible scenario. Or we just break this channel and then just come up and tag this 91.52. Now the Russell 2000, the E-mini for the Russell 2000, we're basically looking at this balance area, this big balance area here, right? You know, as it, found, it broke out of here and then came back, back tested, went up. So right now it came up to uh, this uh, 1618 extension somewhere around the uh, 1689. It seems to have a little bit of a pullback. So we'll, we'll see what we'll be able to continue to break to this uh, above this uh, 1689 and proceed up to the uh, 1743, essentially moving toward the all-time high. So right now we're basically, you know, uh, uh, looking at the Russell 2000 to see would it be able to put in a new all-time high, or would it just kind of falter and uh, just uh, uh, unable to uh, close at a new all-time high. Right. So, and uh, looking at the uh, gold market, you know, gold here on that uh, Wednesday, Thursday uh, morning, uh, we saw a spike up all the way up to uh, uh, 1613, so one thousand six hundred and thirteen dollars and thirty cents, and then kind of pulled back all the way back and dipped below this, uh, you know, this pivot high here of the uh, 1543.30. So right now it's getting a little bit of a bounce here. Uh, I do have a uh, couple things to project some uh, potential target that could uh, conceivably get up to 1725.70. The first one is this Fibonacci retracement. You can see that it retraced back here to the 618 to 1452. And remember, I was basically looking for it to retrace back into this balance zone before taking a uh, long here. So I did not go in on a long here. And I did say if it take out this pivot, then I basically look for a bounce back you know, a pullback and then a bounce, then I will be uh, playing for a much higher than this level at 1566.20. So right now, the uh, gold market, you know, came down and uh, came down to the 618, got a nice bounce and booked to this 100%, uh, percent, this 1566.20. Uh, uh, and with that on the uh, Wednesday and uh, Thursday that uh, Iran uh, bombing of the U.S. bases in the uh, Iraq, uh, you know, then uh, it uh, recover and pull back, pull back to this 14, uh, this uh, 1543.30 and got a nice bounce. So um, I did put in a, a little bit of a short on the uh, pullback at a lower time frame and that got stopped out. Basically, I was playing a little bit of a uh, bear flag and I was thinking that it might pull back a little bit more, but it did not. So uh, it seemed like it might want to uh, continue to move back up. So I kind of reversed the position, got a small long position here right now to play it back up. If it could uh, take back uh, the uh, 1566.20, and I'd be uh, watching this level to get taken out and possibly move up to this area of 1647 to 1660 area. So essentially, you know, looking at 1650, uh, that would be uh, one of the level that I will keep an eye on for the gold market. And then on the crude oil, we see that it is bouncing nicely on crude oil. You know, we're essentially looking for two couple uh, balance area. One is uh, this bigger one here, but actually, uh, if you look at here, playing that, you know, uh, this balance area is uh, we got a uh, look above and fail, and it retraced back to the uh, other side of the balance area. And then we kind of bounce around again, look above and fail, and then came back down to the uh, lower end of this balance area. So right now we got this look above and fail, and that was that, you know, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, you know, last week. And now it came back into this balance area. So if uh, you know the pass is uh, to be repeat itself, then I'd be uh, looking for a potential retrace back to this uh, lower bound somewhere around this uh, 50, uh, 52 area. So that's one possibility. But if it uh, happened that this time is different, <laughs> I mean, there's always that possibility, right? You know, because they have to break out sometime. So if it reverse and break back uh, above this, uh, you know, 60 area here, you know, this uh, 61, essentially 60.94, then we could see a potential major move, right? This swing here and uh, project that up to 100%, and that would put it somewhere around 71. 
But if it uh, retrace and break this 52, I mean this uh, $50.52 uh, level, then it could come down to a 1x and that could take this thing down to 4067. But for now, essentially, I'm just kind of watching to see is uh, going to be retraced back down to the 52 or it going to reverse back up and take out this high here, this uh, 61 area. And then if it does, then probably we'll look for higher prices on the oil. Otherwise, I'd be looking for the uh, $50 area. And finally, uh, looking at the uh, U.S. dollar, you can see that there is a little bit of a ascending channel here. It tried to break down over here and sneak back up. So we'll see would it be able to move that thing back up to the uh, upper bound of this channel because there is this little trend line that I'm watching. If it come up and bound, found, find resistance and reverse back down, I'm still looking for the possibility of breaking this channel and... Uh, you know, come back down on a weak dollar. If the dollar is going to be weak, then the oil is going to come, uh, is going to go up. The price of oil, because the price of oil is paid to a dollar, so it's much more sensitive to the uh, movement of the U.S. dollar. Okay, gold is a little bit more of a safe haven, inflation, and also the dollar stuff, right? So there's a lot of variable on uh, pushing the gold. Uh, but for oil, I think one of the primary things to watch is the U.S. dollar. So we'll see. If the oil prices continue to move up, then I suspect that the dollar will probably uh, get weaker, right? And But if the uh, dollar gets uh, strong, and you know, kind of recoup, uh, recoup from uh, some of the uh, recent weakness, then we could see the uh, the oil price will come down a bit. All right, so uh, that is uh, this week's uh, market update. Hopefully, you find the uh, content in this video uh, be useful and informative. If you do, you know, click that thumbs up and give it a like and help me smash that YouTube algorithm and. Don't forget to click on the subscribe and the notification icon to uh, get notified when I put out that video on the three stock that I'm watching right now that have went parabolic and I'm looking to trade that up to earning. Thank you for watching and good luck on your trading.